I was an immigrant to Australia and uh, we very much had the immigrant's life. And the club really wanted to get back to its identity. I think the biggest challenge for any manager is to get you know, people, whether that's players, you know, staff, supporters, to get them to believe in them. It's a great rivalry with, with, with Arsenal. You know, I loved uh, cricket, I loved uh, Australian rules football, I loved uh, tennis, I loved every sport in Australia, you know, we, we play every sport. Uh, I loved them all, but Shane Warne was, was the one for me. Yeah, look, uh, pre-season's, um, you know, it's been good so far. We, we obviously um, went on a tour of Japan and Korea, which was a fantastic experience, uh, but also uh, gave us this opportunity to work with the lads. And, um, you know, for the most part, they've all come back in really good condition. You know, they've come in at different times. Um, we've got the last of the internationals in this week. So this week, you know, is the first week we've kind of had everyone in, but um, thankfully, um, from a health point of view, most of the players are in a good condition, which is what you need. And uh, yeah, we were sort of you know, nine days out from the season, and um, you know, still got some work to do, but uh, so far it's gone well. Uh, person, um, I guess, uh, uh, quiet, um, hopefully uh, thoughtful, and uh, and generous. Yeah, look, I, I guess um, my story is not too unique. I was uh, I was an immigrant to Australia, and uh, we very much had the immigrant's life. Of, uh, you know, our parents who worked worked awfully hard for their kids and uh, made sacrifices for their children. And you know, from my perspective, I had a really happy childhood. Um, we didn't have much, but you know, being in Australia, you're allowed to sort of you know explore things and, and be outside a lot of my childhood, which then made me fall in love with football and, and that kind of shaped my life from there. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I kind of feel I've always, you know, been very grateful and blessed that, uh, you know, my parents' sacrifices and, you know, that hard work ethic and, and, and making sure that their kids had opportunities has allowed me to be where I am today. Uh, yeah, to be fair, I had no choice. Uh, my father wouldn't let me choose anything else. I mean, I love, you know, I loved uh, cricket, I loved uh, Australian rules football, I loved uh, tennis, I loved every sport in Australia, you know, we, we play every sport, but particularly cricket and, and Australian rules, I played it at school, but, um, you know, there was never any doubt in my dad's uh, mind that I was going to be, you know, falling in love with football, and it didn't take too much persuasion from him, I, I fell in love with it straight away, and, um, you know, we followed our local club, and that kind of sort of charted my course and my journey, you know. You know, I still feel fortunate that I was exposed to the other sports in Australia. I think that's helped me, in, particularly in terms of the way I look at sport in general. But um, yeah, there was never going to be any other um, chosen path for me but football. Uh, I loved them all, but Shane Warne was, was the one for me. Was, I mean, I was, I was raised in Victoria. He's a Victorian. Um, unbelievable cricketer, unbelievable person. Uh, gone way too soon but uh, yeah he was the one for me. Yeah I think it's it's a bit of all those things I think you know as a society um, you know sport is a very important part of Australian life. Um, we're obviously very fortunate to live in a country where there's plenty of space um, you know there's a huge population so you know being outside and, and finding you know space to play whatever sport you want is always there and um, you know, there's a real love of um, sport in Australian culture, whatever sport you, you, you choose. And, and that also breeds a little bit of that competitiveness, I think, because it is a, you know, in population terms, a small country. Um, and, you know, being so far away from the rest of the world, we, I think there's, there's an attitude within Australians of growing up and saying, well, you know what, even though we're that far away, we can take it on against anybody. And I think all those elements, um, you know, mean that, you know, in every sport we can produce world-class athletes and, uh, you know, it's a real, I guess it's it's kind of almost a, a, an integral part of, of, you know, Australian society and culture. A lot of different people, um, you know, I, I, I've always obviously loved football, but 
it wasn't just you know, I think a lot of you know, a lot of people, boys and girls, that love playing football. It wasn't for me just playing football. I loved every aspect of football. So even from a young age, you know, I tried to, to learn everything about the game uh, on and off the field. You know, about the clubs, about the history, about the fans, about the manager. And uh, I was always fascinated with that. So I think in my mind, I always kind of knew that <coughs> at some point, my path after I finished playing would, would go into coaching. And then, and then the influences there are, are, are kind of constant throughout my career. You know. I had, you know, Ferenc Pushkas as a manager when I was a player, one of the world's greatest footballers. He had an impact on me. And then, you know, you look over here to this side of the world and managers like Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, Bill Shankly, Bill Nickerson from here, um, from Tottenham, and all these guys who, who made big sort of marks. I, I read about their history. So I think there was always, and then from other sports as well, you know, just seeing you know, great coaches, great managers, and hearing their stories. Uh, I think there's inspiration along the way for me. Yeah, I think for me, every sort of step I've taken in my career, I've always looked at it, well, you know, what's what's the challenge that is put before me? And, um, you know, obviously with Tottenham, it was, it was, you know, two things that probably attract me more than anything else. One is that the club really wanted to get back to its identity of playing football a certain way. And, you know, I think wherever I've been, every team I've had, you, you've tried to play it brand of football that, you know, is attacking, is uh, exciting to watch, um, ultimately successful and, you know, Tottenham were looking for that kind of manager who would bring that football and that really appealed to me because I, that's what I deliver, you know, if, if a club sort of wants just another manager then probably it's not for me. And the second bit was that the club hasn't had success for a long time and there's a great opportunity here to, to do something special and it's something I've tried to do with every job I've had. Um, Wherever I've gone in, I've gone in after you know, the club hasn't had success and, and brought success. And I felt with those two factors, um, you know, there's all the other things that it's a great club, great fan base, it's the Premier League, but it's the fact that they wanted to play this kind of football and, and crave success in the two major points. I think the biggest challenge for any manager is to, is to get you know, people, whether that's players, uh, staff, supporters, um, to get them to believe in them, in me, in other words. Um, because ultimately, whatever I want to do will only take effect once people believe in me as a person. If they believe in me as a person, they're more likely to believe my ideas, they're more, more likely to follow when, when I ask them to, to do things a certain way. And that's always a challenge because, you know, um, you know, people at a football club are very protective about their football club. They have a history with it. Um, you, you know, you get respect because you're appointed to the job. But beyond that, you need to earn that respect afterwards. And uh, I think for every manager, that's the most challenging bit: is how quickly you can get people to believe in me as a person and then my ideas. And I think once you overcome that uh, as as, a, as the biggest challenge, um, you're more likely to to get on the road to being successful. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's taken me 28 years, so um, you know that's that's how difficult it is. And uh, yeah, it, it has been a tough journey. And uh, you know the fact that you know I, I come from the other side of the world, and, and you know, and, and have been brought up in a different kind of environment uh, has made it more difficult for me to get where I am. But hopefully, me being here means that you know others see it's not impossible. Um, you know, and, and, it, it sort of gained Garner's sort of belief over here that you know you don't have, you can look outside just you know your normal pool of people when you're looking for people to come here and, and make an impact and so hopefully as a twofold just don't get yeah look I think the key for me is do I see them you know playing in our team and, and that might sound simplistic but you know, there's a lot of fantastic footballers around the world, um, but they all have different attributes, different qualities, and you're looking for the, the, the football qualities to fit into the style of football I want to play, so that's really important. And secondly, what kind of person they are, because that, that is not separate from them being as a footballer, because again, you're trying to create a certain environment, a certain culture, and I know, you know from my experience of, in football that you know, certain personalities, certain characters fit very well with what I'm trying to build, here and, and others um, struggle with it. So, you know, you try and identify A, do I see them playing in my team? And B, 
are they the kind of person that will fit in the dressing room? Well, all derbies are different. Um, but the key thing is that for the fans, you know, that there is great meaning to them. There's great significance. And it's never lost on the, um, you know, I think in Scotland, um, the Rangers Celtic rivalry takes on an extra edge because pretty much whoever wins that derby ends up winning the league. You know, that's how, how much they've dominated the league. So there's really massive consequences to, to winning or losing that, that game, not just from the rivalry perspective, but from, you know, a, a league perspective. Um, but certainly, you know, being at Tottenham, um, it's a great rivalry with, with, with Arsenal. You know, nothing make our supporters happier than us beating them. And you, you understand that significance. Uh, and, you know, you, you take on that responsibility to, to, to try and, you know, give our supporters, um, you know, those memorable moments, memorable games that can be passed on through generations. Yeah, hard for me to say because I, I, the thing for me is my journey has been unique in that I've, I've, I've coached at, you know, different levels and every level I've coached, I've, I've worked with brilliant footballers, but, you know, they've, they've, they've been playing at a different level. So what I have enjoyed is, you know, um, the experiences of working with players from all over the world, you know, and, and you know, enriching my life with, um, with their, you know, their, their own values, their own beliefs that they bring into my world, you know, and, uh, so I've, I've, I've been pretty privileged to, to work with some fantastic footballers and uh, wouldn't separate any of them, uh, you know, they've all, you know, I've had success with the majority of them and, you know, that's, that's probably the, the best part of what I do is to be able to share that experience with fantastic individuals. It's hard to say, you know, it's, it's a different role, it's a different, um, you know, um, sometimes the most obvious ones are not the ones uh, you know you'd expect. But um, you know, we've got Ben Davis here, who's already sort of uh, doing his badges and showing an interest in it. And uh, you know, there will probably be others there as they get along in life's journey that uh, you know may take an interest in it. But uh, it's becoming a more and more challenging role. Um, and I think you know players now have more opportunities in the game just beyond coaching. And I think. What it's going to become is, you know, for the ones who do, will be the ones who really are committed to it because it's a challenging role. I think they're all tough. It's not because um, you have to respect every manager. Um, you have to respect, you know, whether that's in, here in the Premier League, obviously we've got some of the best managers in the world. Um, you know, people like Pep have, have made a difference to football, not just to, to the Premier League. Um, you know, you look at the top managers uh, from last year, Mikel, and obviously Jürgen's left uh, Liverpool, but there isn't a manager in the Premier League who don't, I don't respect and who I don't have great admiration for because I know how tough a job it is. Um, and, and that's the challenge of it. That's the challenge of the Premier League is that there's no week that you go into where you know that if you're not 100% prepared, then the manager in the other dugout will beat you. Yeah, obviously, uh, for all type of fans, I, I, and I guess football lovers in general, I know how difficult it is to, or challenging it is to, to love a football club on the other side of the world when you can't see it. You've got to get up at the, the worst hours to watch it. But I, I love the commitment and passion of that shows. Um, you know, I've been to India a couple of times, and I know how much they love their sport. I know they love their cricket, that's for sure. But uh, they love their football as well, and. Um, it's, uh, it's a great country and um, we, we, we're really appreciative of all the support we get around the world and, and I, you know, I'm forever sort of you know, making sure that people understand that distance doesn't diminish passion you know, and uh, you know, that people who support Tottenham uh, and, you know, from, from far and away uh, are still very much committed to our football club and hopefully we can give them something special. <laughs>